One of the common sound by definitions of Buddhism is that it's all about change. On the one hand, you have to accept the fact of change. Things just come and go, come and go. And then on top of that, they're inconstant. You can't really rely on them. Now, this aspect of the Buddhist teachings is there in the side of the teaching that deals with letting go of unskillful qualities, letting go of attachments. But remember, there's another side of the practice as well. We don't just let go. We develop, develop skillful qualities in the mind. And sometimes the teaching side and constancy seem to undermine the developing side. You think about developing something in the mind and something inside you says, well, it's going to be inconstant anyhow. No matter what you do, the results will be inconstant. That's a wrong use of the teaching. It's like that time when the young monk was asked what are the results of action, and he said stress, pain. And the person asking him, who was a wanderer in another sect, said, no, I've never heard other monks talk that way. You better go check with the Buddha. So he does, via Ananda. And the Buddha says, when you're asked about action, you don't don't talk in terms of stress and pain. You talk about the three kinds of actions. Actions that lead to pleasure, that lead to pain, that lead to neither, neither pleasure nor pain. A nearby monk happened to overhear this. He said, well, maybe that first monk was thinking about the principle that all, all feelings are painful. The Buddha said, this is not the time to use that teaching. In the same way, the teaching on inconstancy is not the t to be used when you have to think about developing good qualities in the mind. You have to think about what can be accomplished. After all, the Buddha used the principle of change in his own life to achieve awakening. So a willingness to change is not doomed to failure. Think about how difficult it was for him. Someone brought up in a palace, used to eating nothing but palace food all the time. You can imagine what his first alms meal was like for him. He gives an indication of how he overcame whatever disgust he felt for ordinary food. There's a passage where he talks about when you're living in a place where the food is not good, the other requisites of life you get are not good, but your practice is going well. You remind yourself, okay, I didn't come here for the food. I didn't leave home for the food, or the shelter, or the medicine, or the clothing. I left for something more important, so I have to see that this is unimportant, these difficulties that come up. So when you think about the things you need to change in your life, remember that the Buddha did not teach a defeatist attitude. After all, the name of her, the Eightfold Path, is the unexcelled victory in battle. This is undefeatism. And here you can use the principle of change to your advantage. Remember, you are not a set quantity. Because one of the most difficult obstacles we run into as we try to change our habits is, well, it doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel natural to me. But remember, you are not a static quality. What you are is made up by your actions. So instead of thinking about what you are, think instead in terms of what you can do. And this requires some confidence and some skill. Because we know the voice inside that says, well, yes, I can do this often sounds unrealistic, and that's because it has an unrealistic attitude that now that I've made up my mind I'm going to change my habit, there won't be any problems. Of course there are going to be problems. There are members of the mind that are going to try to sabotage what you're doing. You have to be prepared for that. But you do change with time as your habits change, as your actions change.
There's a question the Buddha has you ask. What if I become as days and nights fly past, fly past? And what you become has to do with your actions. And here you are, living a life that has the opportunity to practice, has the opportunity to make something out of yourself. And what are you doing that, with that opportunity? I knew a Chinese astrologer one time who said she didn't like to deal with people who meditate because they tend to go against their stars. That's the whole practice. We're going against what we feel like doing or what feels natural to us. Because what's natural is simply what's familiar. And we do have this ability to create states of becoming. We do it all the time. We've done it, who knows how many times, as we go from one lifetime to the next, and then many, many times within each lifetime. So use that ability to your advantage. It begins with having the imagination that, yes, it can be done. There are four qualities to imagining something. One is that you generate an image in the mind, and then two is you hold it there. Three, you examine it, look at the details, and then four, you make changes. This is how your imagination helps you to grow. You make changes in the image, and then you evaluate them again. You look at them in detail again. Well, these four aspects of imagination correspond to the four bases for success. Generating the image just comes down to desire. You have to want to change your habit. Say the problem is that you're not having a regular meditation practice. You meditate some days, but not other days. Okay, hold in mind. Generate the desire to have a daily practice, and then hold it there. Now you see that other voices will come up and say, well, I don't know if I can do this. Ask yourself, who are those voices? What do they want? This is the determination to stay. This is the persistence. And then you examine it. What would be involved in having a daily practice? What would some of the problems be, some of the arguments that the mind would set up? And then you use your imagination to figure out ways of arguing against them. One thing you have to watch out for is once you've set up a determination like this, there'll be little blips of a thought in the mind that say, well, maybe not tomorrow, or today I'm too tired, let me rest tomorrow morning, and then it'll go away. It's like little landmines in your mind. When those ideas are not questioned, they take root, and then tomorrow morning you wake up and already in your mind is that thought, oh, not today. You've tripped the landmine. So this is one of the reasons when you focus on changing a habit that you keep repeating to yourself day after day, well, tomorrow I'm going to stick with my habit. Tomorrow I'm going to stick with it. And as you keep repeating that to yourself, not all the time, but frequently, you will run into that little voice and say, well, not tomorrow. You say, why? See what reasons it gives. Usually these little thoughts don't want to reveal their reasons, because they come down to laziness. They come down to defeatism. When you want to take that attitude out, there's that attitude that is really destructive, which is, no matter how much I try to change myself, nothing changes. We have to tell yourself that's not true. You've been many different things throughout your many lifetimes. You've gone way up, you've gone way down. The Buddha says, if you see someone who's really wealthy, remind yourself you've been there in the past. See someone who's really poor and miserable and sick, you've been there too. So you do have the potential for all kinds of things within you. So what is this defeatist voice? Well, it's encountered defeat many times in this lifetime. And it feels that if you try to raise your hopes by 
wanting to change, your hopes are going to be dashed. This is where you bring out your ingenuity. To remind yourself, well, at least tomorrow I'll stick with it, and then the next day, and then the next day, keep it up day by day by day. And that's how habits are changed. So when you have that attitude that, yes, I can do this, it becomes realistic when you realize there will be obstacles. And one of your main obstacles is going to be your sense of who you are, what you are, what you're capable of. As the Buddha said, I mean, all senses of self are limiting. Some are more limiting than others. Why place limitations on yourself? Again, that little voice will come up, well, in this way I won't be disappointed. Well, it's a huge disappointment that you don't try. Think of yourself on your deathbed, looking back on your life. What would you would, will have wished that you had done? Certainly not giving in to those little voices that say, I can't do this, I can't do this. You want to think back on times when you said, yes, I can. And you have potentials within you. Once you make up your mind you're going to do something, you find that there are sources of strength that you haven't tapped into before. I think I've told you about that time when John Fung, out of nowhere, one day said, we we're going to set up all night. I hadn't prepared for that, because we'd worked quite hard that day. And my first response was, I don't think I can do that. And he said, well, are you going to die if you do? Well, no. Well, then you can do it. So I set up. Then as the temptation came to lie down, I kept reminding myself, there must be some way I can stay with this. And I found that there were resources inside that I had never tapped into before. We all have these unused potentials. This is one of John Lee's comments. The human beings go through life with lots of potentials that they hardly even touch, hardly even tap into. Potentials in that properties of the body, potentials in the properties of the mind. So take this fact of change, the fact that the mind can change directions so quickly that there's no adequate analogy for how fast it changes, and use it to your advantage. If your mind can change that quickly, well, you can change that quickly. And I find that you have a lot of baggage. Well, this is the time to let go of some of that baggage. Learn how to travel light. And this way, instead of giving in to your defeatist attitude, you have an undefeatist attitude. That even though you encounter setbacks, doesn't get discouraged keeps on finding ways to make this change succeed. We're so good at sneaking in and finding ways of making it fail. Learn how to be sneaky in the other direction, quick in the other direction. That's when you can use the principle of change to your advantage.